recent political changes have brought with them sporting possibilities hitherto undreamt of by the majority of the population. Chester Williams is a corporal in the South African Army. Previously called the Cape Coloured Army Corps, under the new regime, his regiment is now known as the 9th South African Infantry. He's proud to be holding his country's standard, multicoloured to represent all the traditions that have come together in the new South Africa. He feels he's played a role in helping whites to see non-whites as their equals. I'm very glad I'm serving in the army because I feel I'm doing something for my people's safety. And the armed forces have a lot to do with creating unity in South Africa itself. It's been dangerous at times. Williams has had to patrol black areas affected by the widespread violence that rocked South Africa in the years running up to the recent elections. Non-white soldiers caught here by the mobs were known to have faced instant death with a burning tire around the neck. Now things are calmer, William spends most of his time in the office. His closest colleague is his uncle, Sergeant Avril Williams, one of the few non-whites to have played rugby for South Africa. He's convinced his nephew is cut out for great things. He can, they say, become the second Campesi. He's got the potential to improve enormously. In fact, in terms of his own ability, I believe he could become a much better player than Campesi. Certainly, playing for Western Province in the fiercely contested Curry Cup, Chester Williams has shown the blistering speed of a real match winner. His flair and determination are reminiscent of the great Errol Tobias, who a decade ago became the first non-white to represent his country in rugby. Tobias proved to be an outstanding fly half in the 1984 meeting between England and a coloured 15 in Stellenbosch. That's lovely play. Kunis, Villette and Tobias. Tobias is going to score on his own. Tobias going for the corner. Errol will score. Yeah, he does. A lovely try by Errol Tobias. He had Errol Williams with him. As a result of that performance, Tobias made history by being selected for the Springbok side that year. He was joined by Avril Williams, and the pair went on to help their team to test victories. Stellenbosch University Rugby Club is where most of South Africa's Prime Ministers and nearly one quarter of all Springboks have been nurtured over the years. Williams' father would never have been allowed to walk across these fields. Unless he'd been a manual worker there, things have changed. Williams is served drinks by a white member in his once white-only clubhouse. On the walls are the legions of Springboks that have been produced here. They include Darby de Villiers, a current cabinet minister and former Springbok captain, and the legendary Dr. Darnie Craven, later to become the world's most famous rugby administrator. ...and spent most of the game on the touchline. Western province fights back, but the Transvaal are unbeatable today. In the olden days, South African rugby was played at the famous Newlands ground in Cape Town by whites only, most of whom had no idea that mixed-race players every bit as keen were practicing in dreadful conditions just a few miles away. And Fred Turner congratulates Farney Lowe on his side's great victory. A massive anti-apartheid campaign in the 70s and 80s effectively isolated South African rugby. When the government said coloreds and blacks could join whites in playing the game, radical black sports bodies refused, saying all apartheid in sport and society had to be dropped first. But Chester Williams couldn't wait. Convinced that he had to break away from the separate coloured leagues to make it to the top, he played with whites in club rugby, whilst attending his segregated coloured-only school. The radical teachers reacted by banning him from playing with his classmates. At the other end of the spectrum, there were a handful of anti-apartheid white players who defied the law in the early 70s. The Watson brothers ran a clothing store in Port Elizabeth, selling mainly to black customers. Cheeky Watson, once a Springbok trialist, played rugby in the black townships even while the violence raged. The Watsons had to close their shop when they were accused by the authorities of burning down their house to claim the insurance money. The courts convicted them, but they remained heroes in the eyes of the local black community. It's July 1994, early morning in Cape Town. 
Under the shadow of its famous mountains, Chester Williams is realizing his childhood dream. As the South African rugby team practices for the coming second test against England, Williams is being honed for new backline moves. He's well respected by his teammates, as fellow winger James Small explains. Chessie's probably the smallest guy on the side, but he's the guy probably with the most character, a lot of guts. Um, not scared of anything. Eh? It's not a matter of, uh, we think of him as black or anything, he's a teammate. He deserves his place and that's why he's there. Vaseline, eh? what a wet leader. As a winger, Williams relies on being fleet of foot, and he is a fast runner. But not that fast. The team bus leaves without him. All in good fun, of course, for the players on the bus. Two days later, the crowds are gathering for the crucial second rugby test against England. The flag of the white rule republic and of the new democratic South Africa are both in evidence. No one seems to mind which one you're waving, as long as you support the team in the green and gold. There's a special cheer for Chester. He's one of only two local players in the South African 15. As the new national anthem is sung, the players stand in embarrassed silence. Most of his teammates don't know the words. In the apartheid era, non-white rugby fans were segregated from whites and would often support the opposition tourists against the all-white Springboks. But now, things are different. In the older South Africa, I wouldn't have supported South Africa. But, but now, I definitely support South Africa. Today, although it's still mainly whites watching, they seem proud to be part of a new democracy. Now, finally, we've got something which sort of draws us all together. It's great. Good Fantastic. Time. It's about time. But there's little chance today for either the crowd or the South African team management to assess Chester Williams' skills. He's taken a blow to the head early on and has been taken to the surgery. No cameras allowed here, but we're assured that it's nothing more than mild concussion. Chester is up and about in time to see an ecstatic crowd witness South Africa's surprise victory, tying the series at one all with the English. At grassroots level, however, black school children have far fewer opportunities to reach the top than whites. Views are mixed as to whether that's likely to remain the case on all stuffed with paper. Chester still has scars on his knees from the tackles on the gravel. Today, he brings them a real rugby ball to play with, something he never possessed when he was their age, and they relish the chance to tackle their hero and pick up a few tips. Williams, now touring New Zealand, believes the hardships he underwent as a skinny, underprivileged child have, ironically, helped his career. I think it was a great advantage to me. Through the hardships I had to endure, the disadvantages, the facilities I didn't have, I think I became a better and stronger person because I was always prepared to put in that bit extra. In my book, there's a good future for anyone who believes in themselves, who believes I can do it, I can make it happen. Thank you. 